Lewis Clearbit approaching 25 metres to swim here. The time clicking away at 3.58, 3.59, four minutes. Looking for a 4.15.84, 4.15.84. Simply a remarkable swim from Lewis Clairbert, breaking three New Zealand records at last month's national championship. The 200 IM, the 400 IM, and the 100 metre men's freestyle. We thought we'd dedicate this episode to Lewis Clairbert, and I decided to go to former national swim coach Mark Bone to let him tell us why he thinks Lewis Clairbert could be the first New Zealander to win a medal at the Olympic Games since Daniel Loder back in 1996. He'll also give us his thoughts on Erica Fairweather and Zach Reid. But first up, I asked Mark, what were the attributes that make Lewis Clearbert so good? Look, it's a relationship that he has with his coach. It's unique, it's caring, it's obviously attention to a lot of detail, but they enjoy each other's company. And Gary Hollingwood has done an outstanding job the attention to detail and the finesse that he's created in his uh, actual swims. When he was a junior, he wasn't necessarily an absolute child protege. Even at one point, I understand, he took a little bit of a break, did some surf, surf lifesaving, but then came back uh, with a different approach. And I think that's really valuable, and I think that any athlete that does that, they go around full circle and find out really what they do like and what they want to be. You know, Lewis is always a person that aspires to challenge himself. And he's not um, unhappy about going outside the sphere. You know, he went over to the States this year. He went overseas during COVID and actually realised what he needed to do. You were poolside when Daniel Oda won two golds, 96 as, as the you know, New Zealand swim coach. You've had a lot to do with Anthony Moss. Uh, can we start drawing some comparisons? Yeah, definitely. They all have the same attributes. You know, there's a lot of hunger. There's a lot of desire. They're all team members, and I think that's important because certainly I see that in Lewis. You know, when he stood up there as part of the 4x100 freestyle when he broke the New Zealand record as the lead-off swimmer, he swam it for his team. But he's prepared to do it as an individual. And what I love about him is that every time he's had to step up internationally and nationally, he's risen to the occasion, and that's a real attribute. Second fastest time in the world this year for 400 individual medley. We haven't won an Olympic Games gold medal since 1996, or an Olympic medal since 96 in the pool. Is it asking too much to expect Lewis Clearbert to break that drought? No, not at all, to be quite honest with you. I don't think you can look at second fastest this year, because there's not a lot of meets on in parts of the world because of this COVID environment we have. But I think you've got to look at the time that he actually swam two and a bit seconds faster than what he swam at the World Championships when he finished third. And I think when he finished third, he was still clearly ahead of four. And that's the important bit. And so he's now stepping up another two and a bit seconds. Every time he races, he's racing with improvement. Why do you think he has the big game temperament? I mean, where so many other swimmers failed at the Gold Coast, he won a medal when people weren't talking about him expecting. He goes to the World Championships. He probably swims beyond what we thought wins a medal. Yeah, look, you know, if you come into a meet with an aspiration of doing better than you've ever done. I spoke to him on day one of the race and I said, how are you feeling? What is, what's the expectation of this meet? He said, I want to break New Zealand records. And that was his desire. And that's his own New Zealand record. And I went like, wow, 400 IM? That was when you were third at the World Championship. So that's a big aspirational um, goal. But it was one that he achieved and achieved easily. You have communicated with him in recent times via the telephone just to sort of check in on him. Um, over that period of time, have you noticed um, a maturing? Um, most definitely. You know, this, this is only a young man at the moment, and he's still maturing physically and still maturing mentally. He's obviously mentally tough, you know that, but his biggest maturity is going to be as he evolves in strength and strength development, and that's going to play dividends in that 400 medley, which I think is his premier event. You've mentioned Gary Hollywood. What makes, and you talked about some of his traits, um, how good a coach? Really good coach, really good coach. He uh, demands, I think, you know, that we talk about the skill sets in swimming, the ability to turn, and you see that in Lewis. He, look, he turns like the Americans turn, better than anybody else in the world, and 
His ability against the other New Zealand swimmers when it came to the turns were phenomenal. And that's where he made and has made the biggest gains, along with his breaststroke. Erica Fairweather is qualified in both the two and four hundred free, just 17 years of age, probably four years away from really fulfilling her potential. Boy, what an athlete. Yeah, she's, um, she's one coming up all the time and rising to the occasion on every time she swims internationally as well. Another one that constantly steps up and that's a, a, you know, a great attribute. That's what we've got to sell. We've got to make sure that these are the athletes that we keep putting an investment in. Those that step up at the big international meets. Uh, two new events at the Olympic Games. The women are going to swim the 1500 metres and the men are going to swim over 800 metres. Zach Reed having qualified. What can we expect from Zach? Oh look, Zach's a, a, again a young man that's coming up all the time. You know, he's improving, he's uh, come from a great background with his own father, but you know, he's doing a really good job in the Taranaki and the good coaches again behind him and doing a really good job in the distance swimming. It's interesting, I mean, as you said, the first time we're going to have the men's 800. It was a big move of going back a few years to actually get rid of the 1500 and bring everything down to a thousand. I'm pleased they didn't do that because we've got two great events now, the 800 and 1500. Uh, not a lot of athletes qualifying at the national championships, but it has been a difficult 12 months. It's been a difficult last three months, not a lot of racing, COVID hanging over them. Uh, one more opportunity and that is in Hamilton at the end of May. Can we expect more athletes? Do you think we'll get more athletes there? Oh, look, there's a number that are right on the cusp. I wouldn't be concerned if we don't have a big team. I think the ones that are there are excellent and there is a number that are right on the cusp and they've got to make sure that they, they don't just get there because it's a, a meat that's a, of a lesser quality. And I think that, you know, if they were going to do it, I think there's got to be pressure on them to do it. We shouldn't have COVID excuses anymore. You know, we've been so lucky in New Zealand, we've still generally been able to swim so much of the time and compete in, in any of our disciplines. But, you know, if you're a great athlete, you do things outside of when you can't get in the pool, whether it be your dry land, etc.